Welcome back to part three of our live training session here with our Subaru STI. Now the last tutorial we focused on working within our mass airflow calculation mode. This tutorial we're going to be switching our air calculation mode into speed density, working within our volumetric efficiency table and looking at the process from start to finish between idle control, part throttle and wide open throttle tuning to verify that we have proper estimation of airflow coming from our volumetric efficiency table in this speed density operation mode. So we're gonna have a lot to cover and talk about here. Let's jump in so we can check this out. Welcome back to our live training session here with our Subaru STI. In our last tutorial, we focused on calibrating our math table. This tutorial, we're gonna be focusing on how we can calibrate our volumetric efficiency table in speed density operation mode. Now, this is going to be something that you would normally not find on a Subaru. Subarus are mass airflow based. They use the map pressure sensor for boost control, among many other calculations. They don't reference the map sensor for pure speed density calculations, which is an estimation of airflow. This is something that is in the HP Tuner's custom feature set that we enable in the patch. This gives us the ability to run purely off the map sensor and ignore the map sensor completely. So we're gonna take a look at how we can calibrate our main volumetric efficiency table, estimating the proper amount of airflow coming into our engine. We're gonna be doing a checksum against our work in the math calibration process in the last tutorial. There's gonna be some ways that we can check to make sure that the volumetric efficiency numbers are accurate and that we're accurately estimating the air mass coming into the engine. Super important because things like our engine load rely on us having accurate air mass um, representation to the ECU because um, air mass um, is going to be part of that engine load calculations, grams per rev, if the air mass is represented incorrectly, at, let's say uh, boost areas, it's going to be throwing off where we would normally track in the spark timing table or even in the target air fuel table. Anything that references engine load as a axis into the table will be thrown off. It's going to create a lot of problems for us. So we want to be accurate in our airflow estimation. There's going to be things we need to take a look at and talk about here as we go through the calibration process. This tutorial is just going to be focusing on doing the volumetric efficiency style tuning. Um, we're not going to focus on spark tuning or boost control. We'll be looking at that in the next tutorial, um, going through that process. I always like to go through and make sure my air mass representation is dialed in 100% before I worry about bumping in spark timing and turning up the boost pressure, which we're going to get to that and take a look at that process. It's actually relatively simple to do um, the spark timing and boost control, but the airflow, spe specifically the volumetric efficiency, making sure that it's calibrated does take a lot more work than the mass airflow. So this video is gonna be a little bit longer than the mass airflow video because we have a lot more leg work, a lot more um, tracing and tracking in the actual main VE table to make sure it's populated correctly. Now we're not gonna be able to hit all the areas on the main VE table, on the dyno here, you'd actually have to drive it to be able to populate more data, but we'll see the process and you'll understand what to do and what to look for. So let's actually jump into our calibration file. We can see the last calibration file here is math cal, I've saved that as that calibration process, tuning the math calibration. What I'm gonna do right now, because we're gonna move into doing speed density calibration process, I'm gonna to go to file, save as, and just save this file as SD tuning. And we're gonna jump in here to engine, and we're gonna to go to airflow and into general. Now, in our air calc mode, this tells the ECU with this HBT, HB tuners custom features patch applied, whether we wanna run in math mode or the math SD blend or pure SD only. If we run in pure SD only, it's gonna run off the primary VE table here, of uh, the airflow estimation. This is gonna be where it takes a look at. It's gonna ignore the mass airflow sensor. You could actually remove the map sensor completely as long as you're turning off the associated codes. We've talked about that in the main training course if you've deleted the math. Also, if you are deleting the math, you have to have an air temp circuit satisfied or else it won't know what the air temperature is going to be and it'll never, or a car never run properly. Um, we want to make sure that you're going in and using the air temp circuit that was in that math wiring. You'll tie it into an aftermarket um, temp sensor. Usually a GM air temp sensor is the easiest option. Um, that's going to allow you to track what's going on. Now I do recommend, um, as we're talking about speed density, if you're going to be deleting the math um, and you're going to be running in an aftermarket a temp sensor, um, you want to go and mount that temp sensor on the cold side uh, piping or the cold side of the intercooler um, that gives you a more accurate representation of what the airflow is going to be um, coming specifically into the engine. So if you have a front mount intercooler, you'll mount the intake air temperature off the charge pipe coming off the intercooler. You do have to extend the wires to get to the new location. Um, if you're running a top mount intercooler, try to run the air temp sensor on the cold side of the intercooler. 
Um, that way it's going to track and get a little bit more accurate airflow um, coming into the engine. What we don't want to have is heat soak. And if it's under the hood of the top mount, it's going to get heat soak and that's going to skew up our air mass representation because the, uh, the actual temp sensor is part of the actual air mass calculation. If the air temperature is skewed because it's heat soaked, that'll start to try to lean out the fuel mixture. It actually tries to reduce the pulse width. So we want to have the air temp sensor being in a reasonable location to avoid heat soak whenever possible. Um, so it's more accurately tracking and representing the airflow that's being ingested into the engine and not measuring under hood residual heat soak that could affect the sensor's reading and then ultimately can affect what our airflow modeling is going to be and then ultimately affect what our fuel modeling is going to be because they work hand in hand. The airflow is starting to show it's higher or lower than our fuel mass. Thanks for checking out our teaser clip. If you want to see the rest of this video and more than 500 hours of current EFI training we have to offer, make sure you click right here. If you want to go and check out more teaser clips from this training course, click here and you don't want to miss any of the videos we're going to be releasing on this channel. So make sure you subscribe and click here. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys later.